What's going on everybody? Welcome back. Thanks for hanging with Mr. Bauer for a little bit. Um, just looking at some of my baseball cards and basketball cards that I've had and wanted to talk about some fractions with you guys today. So I pulled out eight of my favorites and uh, today I want to talk to you guys a little bit about equivalent fractions, right? And equivalent fractions, equivalent just means equal and fraction just means, well, we're using a fraction. So I've got eight separate cards here and I can ask you guys a couple questions. So first of all, uh, how many Mike Trout cards do I have? Okay, we've got a Mike Trout card here and a Mike Trout card here. So you could say I've got two Mike Trout cards. Now out of the eight, I've got two eighths. But if I rearrange them a little bit like this, and I put them into smaller piles, instead of thinking about all eight, what if I put them together in pairs? How many of the pairs are Mike Trout cards? Well, I've got this one, one out of one, two, three, four. So one fourth of these cards are Mike Trout. Two eighths are Mike Trout or one fourth is as well. All right, let's try another one. So I've got some basketball and got some baseball cards here. So what fraction are basketball cards? So I'm pull my basketball cards. We'll put these up here like so. And now I've got my basketball cards on top and I got the baseball cards on bottom. Now I've put them into two groups. There are still one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But now I've got one whole group here and I've got one whole group here. So four eighths are basketball cards or I could say one half are basketball cards. It just depends on how you mix them up. All right, let's try another one. How about, uh, how many cards have autographs on them? So I'll show you these a little bit closer. There's a Jordan, a Kobe, a Jordan, a Jordan. We've got Trout and Trout. There's Jose Barrios with an autograph. And there's Ramon Laureano with an autograph. So again, I see one, two cards that are autographed. So let's try to rearrange these into groups a little bit. I've got these don't have autographs, these aren't autographed, these aren't autographed, but these are. So again, I've got two out of the eight. I've got eight cards total, but if I put them into groups of two, only one of those four groups has autographs. All right, so that's what we're gonna take a look at today. We're gonna figure out when we have fractions that have different numerators and denominators, but they still have the same value. So today I'm going to play a game with you guys. We're going to take a look at a couple models and then uh, you should have a good understanding of everything about equivalent fractions. All right, so now I've got a couple models here and uh, we're just going to split these up. Now they're not in the shape of baseball cards. We've got two circles. Now I tried drawing these as close as I can. We're going to assume that these are the exact same size as with the rectangles and with the triangles. So the first thing that we're going to start with is we're going to start with a pretty simple unit fraction. We're going to start with one half. So if I asked you in this circle to shade in one half, remember one's the part, two's the whole. So we would simply shade in that much. We've got one out of two shaded in. You think about it like a pizza. If somebody said, oh, I ate one half of a pizza, that would be how much they, uh, that, how much they ate. Now that's, those are pretty big slices. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide these slices up a little bit smaller into a little bit more appropriate sizes. I don't want pizza sauce all over my face. So now what I'm asking you to do is over here, if somebody ate one half of a pizza, how many slices over here would you need to eat in order to eat the same amount? And you can kind of see we've got this shape right here and we've got that line going straight up. So all we really need to do is shade in the exact same amount. Now you're gonna notice something about these slices as well. There's one, there's two, and three, and four. So I just ate four slices out of the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, out of the eight slices. Now what you're, you might notice here is there are four times as many pieces over here, but they're four times smaller. So if somebody ate a half, and you want to eat the same amount, you're going to need to eat four times the amount of slices. So sometimes you could write it like this. We need to have four more slices to eat because there are four more. And when you use this, and we know four divided by four is one, which tells us that's the same. So one half, 
four times as many slices eaten as four times as many slices that we had, we're gonna have four eighths. So here, one half is equal to four eighths. All right, let's try another one using squares. And down here, I'm gonna divide this into thirds. One third is another unit fraction. So if I asked you to shape, you know, we did one, yeah, we did one half up here. Let's do two thirds down here. So if I asked you to shade in two parts out of the three, we've got one, two, three. All we'd have to do is shade in one third and two thirds. But what if, let's say this was a candy bar and it wasn't divided into thirds, it was divided into smaller pieces. Again, you might notice a pattern. We have more pieces this time how many of these pieces would you need to eat in order to have these? Now this is paper, don't eat the paper, but if they were chocolate bars. So let's go ahead and count them up. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So these are split into six. So let's just go ahead and color in and see if we get the same amount. There's one, there's two, there's three, and there's four. So we would need four six to equal the two thirds. Now, if we similarly use this little strategy, we've got two thirds. There are twice as many pieces and we'll need to use twice as many of those. We can multiply across two by two is four, three times two is six. We can show that two thirds is the same as four sixths. All right, let's go over to our equilateral triangles for one last example. Now, triangles are kind of fun to to split up, I'll give you a little tip. This is one thing that I like to like to show people. What you can do is you can try to find the middle of the triangle. Now there are all sorts of formulas and, and measurements, but for right now, we're not gonna use those. We're gonna think a little bit more abstractly. Put a dot right in the middle, and if you split that up like so, you split that up right here, we can easily divide that into thirds. And up top, Let's go ahead and sheet in one third. So we get one third shaded in. Again, I'm gonna ask you, how much of this would we need to shade in? And let's say this was divided into sixths. All right, and this piece was divided into half. Just got that half of the triangle. And this piece was divided into half. We got that triangle. And this piece, now all those pieces are the same. If we've got a third here, how many do we have to shade in down here? So I'm gonna draw this a little bit darker marker so you guys can see it. We've got that uh, isosceles triangle right here. So we'd want the same amount here. Go ahead and shade that in now. We've got one out of six and two out of six. So one third is equal to two six. It's just that these pieces are divided into half and we have twice as many. So we could write one third times two halves would equal two six. All right, so we got some models going on here with one half, two thirds, and one third to show you how we can find equivalent fractions just by making the whole pieces cut a little bit smaller. Now let's jump over to a bingo game that's gonna let you guys get an opportunity to practice. All right, on ABC, yeah, we've got some equivalent fractions bingo. Take a look at a couple of these examples. Holy cow! All right, if you need to have a mini dance party, go ahead and do so as well. Let's get go. We'll start with regular. And we're gonna start with a three by three grid instead of a four by four or five by five. All right, so up top we have a fraction and it's a six fourteenths. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And six out of those 14 are shaded in. So what we can do here is we can look at all these different fractions and figure out which ones are actually gonna work, okay? Um, I see this is less than half, so anything more than half I'm not gonna look at. So we'll cross out this, and this one, and this one, and this one. And it looks like it's pretty close to half though. This one's pretty close to half. Too big, too small, too small, too small, too big. And that's kinda not so much. Uh, too big and too small. So just by looking at this, it looks like three sevenths is our best bet. Okay, now I see that there are three pieces here and there are twice as many pieces here, but it's the same amount. 
So these pieces in three sevenths are half, or they're twice as big. So we need twice, or we need half the amount. So three sevenths times two halves would give us six fourteenths. So that must be our answer. Oh yeah. All right. Next one we got four fourteenths. We'll use a similar idea. So this looks like it's about a fourth, but not exactly. So less than half. That's too big. Too big. Too big. Too big. We've got this one here, two ninths, maybe. We've got this one here, three fifteenths. We've got this one, one seventh. Here's two sevenths. Well, one seventh looks too small. And it looks like here we're just after, if I drew a line straight up and down, we go across. It looks like it's just bigger than one fourth. So I think this two sevenths looks pretty good. Again, we could, uh, we could see that we've got two pieces shaded in. And let's see, those pieces are twice as big, so we need half as many. Two sevenths times two halves would be four fourteenths. So that's got to be it. All right, next one is five sixths. So that's almost a whole, it's just missing one piece here. That's too small, too small, too small, maybe. Too small, maybe. Too small. Okay, seven ninths or ten twelfths. So let's use what we've we've learned with our, our models over there. We've got five sixths. Now these pieces here look like they're twice as small. So we need twice as many. So let's think about this. Five times two is 10. Six times two is 12. So it should be that one for sure. All right. Okay, next one, uh, let's see, this is barely any. Too much, too much, too much, too much, too much. Looks like one seventh, all right? One seventh here. This piece is uh, twice as big as these two little ones, so we only need one. Let's see, one times two is two, seven times two is 14. Looks like that's gonna be the one, all right. Next one, 14 eighteenths. Looks like it's just over three fourths, not not too much over, but very close. Too little, too little, too little, too little. Looks like seven ninths. Yeah, and that should work. Seven times two is 14. Nine times two is 18. These pieces are twice as big, so we uh, only need half the amount. Man, they're really making us work for this bingo here. Is there any place we can't? Bingo here, bingo here, bingo here, bingo here. All right, next one is for sure going to be a bingo. All right, so one fifth. It's almost uh, it's almost one fourth. You could see if we drew a line right over here. Too big. Too big here. Um, that's close. This one's close. This one's close. I'm gonna use this three fifteenth. See what we have here. So let's see here. One. If we split these into three times smaller, that'd be one times three is three. Five times three would be fifteen. Yep, these pieces here are three times smaller, so that must be our answer and our bingo. Score report. Awesome. All right, next up, let's take a look at a couple practice problems. Now, you're going to notice that there are no models on here, but we can draw these models if we want. I'm not going to go in order on this sheet, but I am going to pick out a couple that would make these, these models a little bit easier. So the first thing I want to take a look at is this, this 2 sixths equal to 4 something. So I'm going to go back to these circles and we'll divide this up into sixth. And I'm going to color in one, two out of those six. We'll draw a very similar size circle and divide those up. Now I need to divide these, or I need to shade in these two, but I need to make that four pieces instead of two. So now we've got this piece and this piece and this piece and this piece. Now I divided those in half, so I've got to divide these in half as well. So now we've got twice as many pieces. Twice as many are shaded in. Let's see how many there were total. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Super. So we got two six is the same as four twelfths. If we use a little strategy, we have twice as many pieces shaded in. So we had twice as many total. So that should give us our answer. Let's take a look at one more. We'll use the model here and we're going to go over to one of my favorites, we'll go with one, one half. Let's use a, a long rectangle here. There's one half, there's one half. Again, we're gonna assume that these are the same size. So I've got this one here, and I'm gonna shade in one half. 
And down below, I need to shade in the same amount, except I need to use three pieces. So I'm gonna divide that into one piece, there's two and three pieces. We gotta to continue to divide that all out because in fractions, all the sizes are the same. So we've got here, one out of the pieces, two and three of the pieces. We've got three pieces shaded in out of one, two, three, four, five, six. So those pieces are uh, three times smaller, so we need three times as many. So we'll go up here, we have three times as many pieces. And so we have three times as many shaded in. So we have three six, and three six is gonna show us the same as one half. All right, now that we've got this idea, um, we do the same to the bottom as the top, and this works for multiplying and dividing. Um, let's take a look at a couple of examples, see if we can do this without the models now. So right up here at our example, we've got four fifths is equal to how many 40 is? Well, could you imagine drawing something and cutting it into 40 pieces? That's like having a piece of pizza and slicing it into 40 pieces. They're gonna be really small, so if you're gonna get hungry, you're gonna have to eat a whole lot of those pieces. So let's see what four fifths actually is. Uh, equal to when we got 40 is. So I know five times eight is gonna give us 40. So I'm gonna do the same to the bottom as the top. So we'll multiply the numerator by eight as well. Five times eight is 40. Four times eight is 32. So four fifths is the same as 32 fortieths. That's our example. Now we saw that number in gray. So let's go to one that doesn't have the answer next to us. We got four sixths here. We're taking that out of 24, so six times what is gonna give us 24? That's right, we have four times as many pieces, four times as many parts, so we would have to shade in four times as many. Six times four is 24, four times four is 16. Next up, we got one half again. All right, now in one half is equal to six, and then we are missing our denominator. So if we had six times as many pieces shaded in, that would mean that we had six times as many pieces overall. One times six is six, two times six is 12. All right, now we've got a sheet like this. I'm gonna put a link here with this video so that you guys can uh, load this up. You can practice this on your own as well. Um, might not be a bad idea to keep a multiplication chart handy if you need that. Um, but just remember that when you are finding equivalent fractions, you can do the same to the bottom as the top. And um, yeah, that should be uh, set, you, set you off for the rest of these. Remember that if you want to draw models as well, that would be beneficial moving forward as well. All right, so just a little, uh, little, take, uh, little look at finding equivalent fractions. Um, thanks for hanging out with Mr. Bauer today, and uh, we will see you guys next time.